chapter, first word, uh, uh, line in the entire Bible. And I want to uh, give you a little thought tonight. It won't be long at all. We'll, uh, we'll go. Look here in Genesis chapter 1, verse number 1. In the beginning. They said that's where they found baseball in the Bible, in the beginning. Uh, in the beginning, God. One, two, three, four words. It's three words that said God. And it's over 3,000 times in the Bible. In the beginning, God. There's your answer right there, buddy. There's what the whole world needs to know. That's what the scientific world needs to know. In the beginning, God created heaven and the earth. And then it goes on, 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 so forth and so on. I want to talk tonight and give you what, I, what, what I'm going to call some attributes of God. I thought about doing several Sunday nights because there's a bunch of what they call attributes of God. Attribute is a, um, is a characteristic of something or somebody, something that stands out about them. And, <clears throat> excuse me, the main characteristic of God, of course, is love, and then he's understanding and just and, and holy and all them things. Tonight, I want to look at the three most commonly talked about attributes of God. Now, this is nothing that you shouldn't already know, but a preacher, my job is to keep, keep, keep hammering and hammering and hammering things that we already know, keep them nailed down tight, keep, them, keep the doors shut to the devil and, and the wickedness out there in the world, and to keep our hearts and minds in the right direction, on the right track. And the only way you can do that is by keep on hitting these same truths over and over and over. So uh, tonight... How, how are you going to uh, define God? Um, my goodness, uh, uh, what a subject. The Bible don't argue God's existence. The Bible don't go into detail to prove there's a God. It takes it for granted. The Bible just takes off in the beginning. God didn't like he's already there, and anybody with any sense knows that there's got to be a God. It just takes it for granted there's a God. And uh, they said that the word God uh, was considered so holy by a Jew in the Old Testament, that when they the scribes, uh, scribes' job was to copy the scripture. That's what a scribe did. Get down just higher, please. And uh, a scribe's job was copy. That's what scribble. That's where we get scribble. Scribe, a scribe, and he would write. And the scribe's job was. It'd be like uh, uh, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and they wrote copies of the scriptures and passed them around and stuff like that. And they said, tradition says that. Those Jewish scribes, they would say, in the beginning, and before they'd write that name, would lay that quill down and pick out a brand new one that had never been used, like a new pen, dip it in that ink and write God, and then pick the other one up and keep writing. That every time, that's how highly they reverend his name and how highly esteemed the name God was. And people throw the word God around now like it's a joke, like it's nothing. Listen, when you talk about God, brother, you're talking about holy ground. That's why the Bible talks about profanity. People like people cussing, using God's name as a cuss word. That's a, that's a terrible, 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 terrible. Uh, we live in the Lord Jesus Christ as a cuss word. Even people claim to be Christians a lot of times use the name of Jesus or God in profanity. And his name is holy. Like his love, like his goodness, like his, his cre he's creator, he's ruler. He's all kinds of the source of moral authority, supreme being, all of that kind of stuff. But tonight let's look at his three, what, what we would consider the main attributes of God. And the first one is God is omnipotent, omnipotent. Now that word omni means all, everything, omni. Potent means strength, strength, strength. Uh, like the impotent man down there was, was weak. He couldn't get up. I had one old preacher got up and he said, well, there's a lot of impotent folks down there. That impotent. He was talking about, he meant impotent. That, like he said, he didn't thought he meant important. And it's not. It's imp impotent means un, un, uh, weak, unable to have strength. And so God is omnipotent, omnipotent. You thought about that lately, people? Have you thought about what that means? All power. God is, you know, people say almighty God. That's exactly right. Almighty. 
Listen, the God that me and you serve, our God that we love and one we're going to live with forever has absolute all power in heaven and in earth. He may, listen, uh, let me ask you something. People say, well, God, he ain't going to tell me what to do. Let me ask you a question. If you make plans, can God stop them? He sure can. One more time. If you make some plans, if he wants to, can he stop them? Yes, he can. Let me ask you another one. If he makes plans, can you stop it? No. Uh, He's all powerful. We're nothing. We're a little nothing down here on this earth. He created all things. Somebody said, I believe in the Big Bang. Yes, yes, sir, buddy. God spoke and bang, brother, there it was. Everything was there. It's all the way through the Bible. Every once in a while you meet one of these intellectual smart elects that try to come along and they think, oh, you ignorant people that believe the Bible, you're you're so pitiful. And they, they come up with these deep questions that nobody can answer and you've heard Heard, you've heard them, you know, you've heard intellectuals come up. One guy comes up and he said, uh, well, let me ask you this. What happens when an irresistible force meets an immovable object? And the answer to that is there is no answer. You know, how can an irresistible force meet an immovable object? Because if if, if movable, it ain't unmovable, and if it's resistible, it ain't irresistible. So if an irresistible force meets an Im- immovable object, and the answer is the... Um, The uh, immovable object is shattered without moving and the irresistible force is deflected without stopping. (laughs) So I I don't know. It's like asking, can God God, uh, make a a question he can't answer? That's that's ignorance. People sitting around doing that. That's old wise fables. Uh, uh, Worrying about stuff that don't exist. No way. Don't pay no attention to a bunch of stuff like that. Don't be like, oh, you people believe that God is God is everywhere. Yes, we sure do. You say, oh, you people believe God knows everything. Yes, we sure do. You believe God can do anything. Yes, sir, we sure do. Guilty as charged, brother. He can make an earthquake. The Bible said is anything too hard for God. Isaiah 44 and verse 24, he said, I am the Lord that maketh all things. John 10, 17 and 18. You know what Jesus said? You know why we know Jesus was God? Jesus said in John uh, chapter 10 and verse 17 and 18, he said, I lay down my life of myself. He said, I do it. Nobody, don't take my life. I lay it down and I can pick it, take it back up again. That was God in flesh. He can do anything. And uh, Ephesians 3 verses 20 and 21, the Bible said he's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or even think. God is able to do stuff we can't even think. I can think some pretty big things, can't you? I can imagine some great and wonderful thing. God is able to do way past anything that's ever even entered our mind. I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, he is omnipotent. He's able, he's able. Little kids sing, he's able, he's able. Our God is able. Unless you say, well, Brother Danny, we know that. Well, sometimes we live like we don't know it. I'm going to tell you people hear something tonight. You hear me and hear me well. If God Almighty was powerful enough to hang this world on nothing and he took care of his children through the, uh, through the wilderness and he preserved Noah and his family through a flood and kept them on a boat for over a year, he can take care of me and you in a pandemic or a storm or whatever we're going through. He's able Amen. He's able. He's omnipotent. He's omnipotent. But let me say secondly tonight, God is omniscient. Omniscient. That's got that word science in it. Omniscient. 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 All knowing. Not only can he do everything, he knows everything. He knows all. He sees all. He he said, I am the Lord. I I change not. There's none else, none like me. In Isaiah chapter 46, he said, I declare the end from the beginning. God don't know, only know everything that's going on. He also knows everything that's ever happened. And at the same time, everything that's going to happen. But that's why you'd be better off to put your life in his hand. Let him make a call of shots. Because he knows, he knows, uh, uh, he knows, brother. He has neither beginning or ending. He knows every sparrow that falls and hits the ground. I was out over there visiting yesterday with Pinky. Maybe they're watching tonight. And, uh, me and him sitting out on the front porch. There's the prettiest bird coming down in that yard. 
and he had a bird bath right there, but his wife goes out there and puts seeds in there and, and feeds the birds. Big old blue jay, big old thing. I, I said, is that a blue jay out there? And in a few minutes, here was a cardinal, just a red bird. That's a weird thing if you're an evolutionist. How did that thing evolve so bright red if they all evolved to match their environment? And uh, then, then the, the, girl is, the girl cardinal, a female bird is a little bit brownish like, got a little red around her. And I thought, my goodness, you know, the Lord knows every one of them. And there's another bird sitting up there in a tree. And them birds would fly down there and get some of that, some of that bird seed and fly off with it just every few minutes. It was, it was really a, a neat thing to sit there and watch for a few minutes as we sat there on the porch and talked. And I thought, you know, God knows every sparrow that fell down and died in Japan uh, yesterday and can tell you exactly how many they was. If there is sparrows in Japan, buzzards or whatever they got, uh, God knows every one of them. God knows the crows. God knows the bats. Amen. Uh, he, knows, he knows them all. He knows uh, the hairs on our head are all numbered. I read somewhere where if you have uh, if you have um, blonde light colored hair that you have like 120,000 hairs average on your head and if you have dark hair uh, like black hair you have like 110 I don't know why that is a few uh, blonde light light colored hair has more they say I, I just read that and if you figure in all the uh, bald headed people in the world then then you would uh, uh, figure out probably a hundred thousand hairs per person in this world. I don't know what a hundred thousand times seven billion is. Seven billion hundred thousand hairs. Phew. Just in, just in, on heads. Not counting your arms, beard, and everything. Come out your nose. You know, that's one thing you might notice as you get older. They start coming out your ears and coming out your nose and everything else. And, and everything else. and uh, 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 you've, God knows every single one. I don't know how many hairs that is. I don't know. God, you say, Brother Danny, that's silly. No, he's God. He's omniscient. It don't even strain him. You know that. He don't have to say, now, now i got to keep track of it. No, he he's automatically knows everything. By the way, since I'm saying this, I'm trying to encourage you. He knows how much your house payment is, y'all. He knows what your bills are. He knows your car is, is going to have a flat tire. He knows nothing takes him by surprise. He knows it all. He's able to help you. He's able to get you through your marriage trouble. He's able to help you get you through your financial trouble. Listen, if God Almighty can say, hey, let there be a world, then God can fix the problems me and you have. Hey, you know what our problem is? We doubt him. We don't trust him. We try to work it out ourselves. We try to figure it out without God. The best thing me and you can do tonight is get down on our face and say, Lord, I, I'm doing the best I can. And God, I give you this in Jesus' name. Lord, however you want to use my life, you use it. That's what I've done. There's been, it's been hard being a pastor through this pandemic stuff and everything. Uh, you feel like you, you, no matter what you do, you, you get condemned and you get judged. And, and people say you should do this. And people say, no, you shouldn't. And, and either, no matter what you do, you, you catch it from all sides. And you know what I've done? I've done the same thing I've always done. I've got down on my knees and said, God, you know I'm a dummy. God, you know I'm just a little child. I know not how to go out or come in. I don't claim any great knowledge or ability. Lord, I'm begging you to help me and lead me. And brother, you cannot improve on doing that for your life. Put your life in his hands. Put your life in his hands, young people. Put your life. Give it to God. God. He don't make no mistakes. Give it to the Lord. He ain't going to do you wrong. Let put your future in his hand. Marry who he wants you to marry. Live like he wants you to live. Do like he wants you to do. You can't go wrong because he knows everything. Amen. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 13. There is no creature that is hid from his sight. All things are naked and open under the eyes of him with whom we have to do. That means he sees everything. He knows where you was last weekend. He knows what you did when your parents wasn't around. He knows everything you looked at on your phone. He knows everything uh, that you've hid from your mama or your dad. God knows it. You say, well, nobody knows this. Yes, they do. The Lord knows it. He knows it. He's all-knowing. Jeremiah 23, 24. Can any hide himself in places that I shall not see him, said the Lord? I'm telling Telling you something, brother. God knows. They said one time uh, this little boy uh, did terrible on his test at school, and uh, he he just being a smart mouth, and and uh, he didn't answer none of them, and he wrote on the test 
Only God knows the answer to these questions and turned it in. Well, he got back an a, a E or a F, whatever, sorry, it's great you can get. He got his paper back and said, God gets 100, you get zero. <laughs> and that's the way it is. God gets 100. God gets 100 on every test. On every, he's never told me wrong. Can anybody in here tonight stand up and say, God told me to do something that turned out to be a bad thing to do? No, you cannot. Now, all of us can stand up and say, I did this and I did that and it was a terrible mistake. But nobody in here can stand up and say, well, he told me to do that and it was a mistake. No, no, sir, no, sir. Psalm 44 and verse 21, God, he said he knows the heart. Acts chapter 1 and verse 24, Thou, Lord, which knowest the hearts of all men. First John 3 and 20, they said, uh, uh, If our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart and knoweth all things. You know what the crazy thing is, the wild thing is? He don't only know all the facts and everything, he even knows your thoughts. Understandeth my thoughts afar off. I don't know if you do this or not, and but I do. I, a lot of times I pray without even saying anything. Like I'll be just going down the road, and I'm talking to the Lord in my head. And there's people say, well, that don't do no good. He knows exactly what you're, you can pray, you can pray, can not even move your lips. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking this. Dear Lord, help me today and help me to do right. God, give us good service Sunday morning. Please bless so-and-so. I got down my list uh, where I've got just about every family in our church. If there's somebody in here, there might be a, a few that I've not got, but I've got almost everybody, and I prayed for y'all last night. Every family in here that I got on that list, I prayed for you last night, and I said, Lord, you know their needs. Lord, you know what, what they're going through. Help them, help them, help them, help them. You say, well, Brother Danny, why do you do that? Because I believe... I believe that God hears and God answers prayer and I believe he helps you if I pray for you and, and, and he's able and he's omniscient and he knows all the needs anyway. I, I met a lady at the flea market one day and I give her a track. She's selling something and I was looking at it and, and sometimes I just stand there and, and I look at what they got and they'll say, well, we got these right here and right there. Some books there ain't but $5. You don't want them? I said, no, nah, not today. Can I give you something to read? And I'd use it for excuse to witness, and I'd give her excuse. She said, ah, I'm kind of mad at the Creator right now. That's what she said. And I immediately thought, no, I, ain't, I don't want to stand near you. But you're mad at the Creator? Here we are, a little bitty speck. If you was a half a, a mile up there in the air, you couldn't even see you from up there. Here we are, little bitty speck. I'm mad at him. He done, he done something he shouldn't have done. Woo, Lord have mercy. That puts you in a big place and him. Now, listen, brother, you don't get mad at God. You don't get mad at God. I, you hear people all the time saying, I'm, I'm mad at him because he let my mama die. Well, you think your mama's going to live forever? Everybody's going to die. Everybody's going to die. Don't get mad at God because somebody died. And it, I mean, you know why people died? Because they sinned. If your mama hadn't sinned, she wouldn't have died. Everybody sins, and everybody dies. We're born with it in us. You can't blame God for stuff like that. i tell you what she ought to do. She ought to say, Grandma died, or Mama died because she's a sinner, but thank God God loved us enough to send his son so that she can die for her, and I can see Mama again when I get to heaven. That's the right way to look at it. Don't look at it like, well, why did God do it? Why did God do it? What a brat you, what a nut. I mean, listen, somebody said, God is before me. He'll be my guide. God is behind me. He'll be betide. God is beside me to comfort and cheer. God is around me, so why should I fear? He's omnipotent. He's omniscient. And then finally this evening, number three, he's omnipresent. Now, omni means all. Present means here. So he's all present everywhere at the same time. He don't only know everything. He can't only do anything, everything. That he's everywhere at the same time. Now, a lot of times we'll go somewhere, and uh, I, I've said it, and you said it, and it's a figure of speech. We'll go to church, and boy, I went down there, and God wasn't a million miles that place. And, and I know what you meant. You meant he wasn't in control, moving everything. But the truth is, you ain't never been nowhere he ain't. 
He's everywhere. He don't have to move to get there. Uh, he'll, he'll be there waiting on you when you get there. He was out there waiting on Jonah when Jonah run. He's out there waiting on Peter when Peter sinned. Uh, he is all places at the same time. Psalm 11 verse 4 said his throne is in heaven. His eyelids are on the children of men. He is a spirit. And Jeremiah 23, 23 said, Am I a God at hand and not a God afar off? Do not I feel heaven and earth? Heaven and earth. One old skeptic said to a boy one time, he said, Where is God? And he said, Where is he not? Where is he not? If I ascend into heaven, he's there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. Everywhere, he's everywhere at one time. You know, I was thinking this morning, I don't know if I've ever thought this before, but I thought about, you know, the Lord's able to hear everybody praying at the same time. Can you imagine how many people was praying this morning at 12 o'clock around this part of the country? Oh, my goodness, millions and millions and millions. There's millions of people praying right now, right now, praying. And the Lord can hear every one of them, every one of them. That's amazing to me. I, th I thought about this. There's probably, probably, I don't know this, there's probably, I don't know, I guess 50 people getting saved right now this very second. All at the same time. They're getting saved round the clock somewhere in this world. Now, a lot of times we say, boy, well, don't nobody get saved anymore. Yes, they do too. We might not see it a lot, but there, uh, you go all over the world, brother. This is a big world, and there's a lot of people in this world, and there's a lot of missionaries out there, and they're having meetings in this, some of these big places, and even a lot of these evangelists, and some of them, some of them we, we, we don't see eye to eye on doctrine, and they believe some weird stuff, but when they get up over there and they preach Jesus Christ, and they preach what's right, a lot of times people get saved, and when people believe on the Lord, they're saved. They're saved. There's a lot of people believe that if a false prophet, uh, you know, somebody that's off on their doctrine, maybe not a complete hypocrite, preaches it, nobody don't, that's not true. Well, they get out there and preach that word of God, and somebody out there believes it, they get saved just like me and you do. Now, I'm glad, brother, they, they, could be, they could be 50 people getting saved right now at this very same second, and somebody's saying, oh, Lord, I need you, all at the same time, bam. And the Lord knows every one of them and fixes their eternity and predestined them to be conformed to the image of his son all because he is omnipresent. He's everywhere. And that means you can't get away from him. It means you can't get away from him. He was God before he made the world. He'll be God when the world burns up. He was God when the twin towers fell. He was God when your heart was broke. He was God uh, when, when, uh, when you cried yourself to sleep at night. He was God when you went to the funeral home and saw your mom and your dad, one of your loved ones, for the last time. He was God on the throne before me and you were ever born. He'll still be God on his throne a million years from the night. He's all present, all powerful, and all knowing. said one time this guy he's a wicked man he he people tried witness to him and uh, somebody went to his house one day and and he, and he had a, a we call them things a mantle over your fireplace and had this weird looking shell up there and a piece of paper sticking out of it and the guy said that's what's that and he said that's the conversation piece and he said what do you mean by that and he said that right there's how I got saved he said I was running from God. People tried to talk to me and everything. I wouldn't listen. I wouldn't listen to God. I was running from God. And he said, I was deep sea diving. And had on one of them things, over them suits with them tanks on your back and everything, down at the bottom of the ocean. And he said, so I looked, and there was a piece of paper sticking out of an oyster shell. Bottom of the ocean. He said, I picked it up, threw it up with me, pulled it out, and there's a track. Said, God loves you, and Jesus died for you. He said he read that thing and got saved. He said, if God loved me enough to track me down to the bottom of the ocean, if God's that big and that powerful, I'll trust him and I'm going to live for him. Think about that, y'all. How'd that get the oysters eat tracks? <laughs> I don't think so. I don't know. I have no idea. Somebody might have put that in there and threw it off of a, a boat. You don't never know. See, 
we limit God in our mind. Oh, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? I got an idea. Let's just say, Lord, I'll live right. I'll do the best I can, and I'm going to trust you with this situation. How about that? How about that? You can't live in worry. You can't live wringing your hands. You can't straighten out all the mess the world's in. I can't. I wish I could. I would. I can't. You can't. But I tell you what we can do. We can trust the Lord and do right and serve him. And he's able to do what he wants to do, can he? He's able. All right, let's stand by our heads for prayer. I don't know why maybe the Lord puts this on my heart tonight, but I feel like somebody just came by for a few minutes tonight to hear this truth. God can do anything. God is everywhere. He's right there with you when you think you're all alone. And God knows everything. Let's bow our heads. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Right now, where you stand. Maybe you're here tonight and you say, Brother Danny, I am, I am guilty. I'm just trying to wring my hands and figure out everything myself and try to work things out and think it's all up to me but it ain't really my battle to fight no way it's the Lord's and I want to get down on my knees tonight and I want to give it all to him come on amen amen <coughs> excuse me amen amen come on amen come on others others need to come right now be a good time to do it I just want to trust you Lord just want to trust you just want to trust you just want to trust you just want to trust you, Lord. Heavenly Father, I pray in Jesus' name, Holy Spirit of God, that you'd help us all to trust you, Lord. Help us to trust you. Thank you for a wonderful Father's Day. Thank you for all the gifts and cards and stuff like that we've got and, and, and my kids, Lord. I pray in Jesus' name, Holy Spirit of God, take us and use us for thy glory. Help us to do right. Bless every single person here tonight. Have your way, Lord. Do what ought to be done in our lives. And we'll thank you for it. Help that one here tonight that may be really, really struggling financially or even spiritually with kids or parents or husband or wife fighting a battle. Help that one here that's got their self tangled up in something they ain't got no business being in. Maybe some kind of uh, drug or alcohol or some kind of sin of the flesh. I pray you'd help them, Lord. Have mercy on us, God. Lord, get us ready to go to camp. God, give us a great week at camp. Thank you for it in Jesus' name.